Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how we installed a garage door opener with camera, keep on watching. Let's get started. Now these are our two systems, and as you can see, there are a lot of parts for each system. Most importantly, both these systems have corner to corner LED light systems, which will definitely illuminate my entire garage, AKA my shop, which is absolutely perfect and exactly what I want. However, this one has a camera, a Wi-Fi camera built into it so we can see anything and everything. Maybe I can do a little BYOT filming action on this bad boy too. Now, when first opening one of these packages, there really is quite a lot in this one box. So don't feel intimidated at all to actually put this thing together because the instructions are very detailed and hopefully this video will help greatly. Now, this is the center rail as well as the front rail. Now, specifically, this is the first thing you're gonna be putting together and it's very simple. All you have to do, push them together with a bit of force. Just make sure that this one is in the very front. Now this one is different than the others just with the big yellow tag right there, but there's also a U-clip that's right next to it. And after you snap them all together, you then lay the entire rod down and that's where this comes into play. Now this is a steel reinforced drive belt, which is perfect for this type of system because one, it's actually very quiet, but two, it's extremely strong and durable. So perfect for my application, especially when you consider that this thing is gonna be right below my soon to be daughter's bedroom. Now the U-clip that I mentioned earlier needs to be bent upwards because when this thing is fully functional and the trolley is on it, you don't want the trolley system to be going too far. That's basically a stopping point that guarantees it's not gonna run into the actual ball and pin unit at the very end. Now the nice thing with that wheel is that it does come pre-lubricated. Just make sure you put a little lubrication around that bolt prior to inserting it and fastening it together. Now this nifty little thing is the actual trolley unit itself. Now this is the unit that's actually going to be sliding down the rail in order for the garage door to open and close properly. Now after you have that position, you then insert this bracket on the back end, which is very easy. All you have to do is just give a couple love taps and then screw it into your motor unit. Now that bracket is just connected with two bolts, which are very simple and easy to install. Also, don't forget to install your rail bolt right there. I didn't until the very end just because I was like, oh, why do I have an extra bolt right here? Note to self. Now getting back to the drive belt, you hook one end of the drive belt into the side of the trolley. Then you grab your spring nut for your threaded shaft, which you're gonna be connecting and threading through your trolley system. Now this might seem like a complicated overdone unit, but in all honesty, once you put it together, it's very simple and straightforward. Now after you place a thread rod through your trolley, you then slightly tighten your spring nut. Now after that, you bring your drive belt around Around and you use your master link cap and clip system together in order to connect the entire unit in one foul swoop. Now at this point all you have to do is tighten your spring nut as much as you need in order to reduce all the slack out of your drive belt. Now in the end it should look something like this and it's pretty apparent once you have proper tension. Now as you can see we got that hooked in right there this all the way down is taut. I would say nice and taut. You don't want to loose it all. And it might be jiggling a little bit, but that's just natural. Now at this point, it's time to install your sprocket cover, which is nice as well as the fact that it's actually pre-lubricated and you don't have to worry about lubricating your drive belt at any point in time, which is very DIY friendly and always appreciated. Now at this point in time, we now have to switch over to the garage. And if you don't have a garage that looks exactly like this, don't worry about it because this system does fit multiple styles out there. Okay, so we got ourselves a bit of a predicament here because this is actually a low profile ceiling for a garage. And in the instructions, it says to actually put this mount above this guy, which is normally the case. However, because it's a low profile, this needs to go below, but it cannot, it needs to be two inches above the highest point of the garage when it goes up. So 
we're really stretching it if we basically put it right along there. It's definitely a little under two inches, but I'm hoping it's okay. Only one way to find out. Let's try it. Now it's time to install our garage rail to the bracket that we just installed using a clevis pin. Now I've seen these things for years and I had no idea that this is actually called a clevis pin, but there you go. It's basically just a very nifty way to fasten and hold something together without having any need for threads. So perfect, easy application and installation. Now once that pin is installed, you're easily able to swing the entire unit up. And as a quick side note, please ignore all the randomness that's on the top of my ceiling. That's normally not featured in my videos, but as you can see, I have paintings and a bodybuilding trophy that I'm oh so proud of. Okay, this is a bit of a makeshift stand, but you know what? It works. It's perfectly level, as you can see. Now the real test is gonna be Will it hit the garage door when we lift up? So let's lift up. And as you can see, we have space. Not a lot of space, but we definitely have space and that's all we need at this point. But we do need to do something about this ceiling. And before I install the unit to the ceiling itself, I decided to install a radiant barrier for attics. Now these Chamberlain garage door units do come with their own support brackets, however you might need to actually get a few more brackets if you need ceiling support. Luckily for me, because the ceiling is so low, I didn't have to purchase extra brackets, but specifically if you do have a taller ceiling, you will definitely need some type of extra bracketry to mount to your ceiling joist. Now as you can see, I mounted that bracket first to the ceiling joist and then attached the side positioning properly on one side and then the other side. You also want to be mindful that the top support bracket is in line with the bracket that's actually attached to your garage door. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it makes alignment a lot easier. Now this is a very simplistic process, however, it's very tight because of how low my ceiling is, so it did become a little bit cumbersome, but as you can see, piece of cake in fast forward motion at least. Now once you have your garage door fully secured to your ceiling joist, it's now time to remove your makeshift support stand. At this point in time, I decide to install my emergency release handle as well as my straight door arm. Now the straight door arm is just attached with a similar Kelvis pin that we used in the past. Now the directions say I need to install this guy right over here. However, because I already have this nice handy little mounting plate, I'm gonna mount it to this and then mount that over here. So first things first, we gotta mount this little boomerang L piece. And what better to connect it with than a Kelvis pin? Are you sick of me saying Kelvis pin yet? Well, at least you'll remember it now. Once we have that in place, we then connect our boomerang L bracket to our straight arm bracket using a bolt, a washer, and a nut. And now comes the funnest portion of any DIY project, the wiring. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone ever says that, but in all honesty, the wiring in this type of application is very simplistic and very DIY friendly. Now the wiring that comes with the door opener control box is a two part wire. One part is white and red and the other one is just solid white. Now the screws on the backside say W for white and R for red. So very simplistic and easy to differentiate where which one is going. Once you determine where the door module is going, you go ahead and fasten one screw to the bottom side and then flip the top flap up and install the second screw overhead. Now once you have that taken care of, go ahead and start pinning the wire to the surrounding surfaces with some of the staples that come with the kit. Now once you get the wires to the door opener itself, it's very DIY friendly. The left side has a red position where the red and white wire is going to be going. Then the first white connector on the left side is going to be where the white connector is going. Then once you have that complete, go ahead and grab your trusty level and let's go ahead and install our sensors. Now you don't have to have a laser level in this type of application, but it does make things a little bit easier. Just make sure the sensors are no higher than six inches off the ground. Slide the curved arm of the sensor bracket around the edge of the door track, snap it into place, and then we can install our sensor. 
Now there's a specific smooth head bolt that comes with the kit along with a wing nut and this is the specific bolt that needs to be used in this application. Once you have one side taken care of, then go ahead and proceed to the opposite side and this is where the laser level really earns its keep because I know for certain the ground is not level and these sensors need to line up appropriately. I then use the tacks provided in the kit and feed the wires up across both sides and towards the center of the garage door. I then attach the wires to the ceiling joist until I make my way to the garage door opener. Now each sensor has two wires, one specifically is solid white, the other one is white with a black stripe. Now you twist the similar colors together, plug them into position, and guess what? Now it's time to turn it on. Now we have finally turned this beautiful thing on and it's not fully functional yet, but let's see if everything's on. So we got that guy, little orange light is on, and we have that guy, little green light is on. So I think we're ready to position this guy. So, let's try it out. We got three buttons here. That's the adjustment button. Now we're supposed to press and hold that blinking button until it goes all the way up. That's pretty good. It feels good. So we hit that middle section again, blinks, and then we press the down button. I like it. So after that, click the middle button again, and then we're supposed to click. Now because I just preset where I want the height to be, as well as where I want it to close, it automatically comes up to the exact position that I wanted it to, and then it goes back down to the exact position that I wanted after I clicked the down button. Don't you just love it when something actually works the very first time? Always satisfying. Boom, look at that. Done deal, baby. Now safety is also very key with a garage door. So I'm gonna make sure those sensors are working with a box. Box is in the way. Kona, you don't wanna be the test dummy for this one. So you go back to your panel. It's blinking, which means it has power. Now this, we go and press this to see if it closes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Sensors are working appropriately. Perfect. Now we also want to make sure that it can't shut and close itself on anything too vigorously. So we click it again, make sure when it actually lands on that, that it actually goes up. Look at that, boom. Now that we tested the safety factor and it's actually working appropriately, we move on to the other side. Now I did get smart on the side and I decided to actually install the vapor barrier prior to installing the garage door, which I highly suggest doing because it just makes sense. But after installing the first one, this one was a breeze to install, very easy and took half the time. Now, in all honesty and full disclosure, I am not getting paid from Chamberlain, but they did send me these two units for free, and I'll leave links in the description box below on where you can find these amazing products. Ooh la la. That's, that's nice. I mean, that compared to that? Oh, yes. Love it, Kona. Love it. Don't you love it? I install the remaining radiant vapor barrier on the other side and then proceed to installing the outdoor key code opener if you want it. You don't have to have this installed if you don't want to, but it's always nice to have just in case. Now after that's installed, I then proceed to downloading the MyQ app and proceed to actually connecting both units to the Wi-Fi. Now you do want to have good Wi-Fi, hopefully you do, and any app that's close to a five-star rating with over 500 thousand reviews is a good one in my book. Now after that's taken care of, I then install the reserve battery pack just in case that the power goes out, the garage doors are still functional. But guess what? After you have that taken care of and fully installed, we are done.
Not only is the system extremely functional and secure, but it also provides so much extra light, especially for the fact that I do a lot of projects in the garage and light is very key. So I love having the extra light as well as the fact that with the connection to your phone, you're easily able to open the doors at any point in time, as well as check out the inside of your garage and see what's going on. We can also speak into it, we can listen into the garage, and we can also save pictures on our camera roll. Gotta love technology sometimes, and that is what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. Don't freak out, everyone's fine. It was just user error and a wheel came off.